Hi folks, this is AP Biofana with Dr. D and this is Chemistry of Life, a tale of water and bonds in three acts, act one. This series of videos addresses unit one and topic one of the AP Biology course and exam description, but it really is a foundation for all of AP Biology. Biology is the hardest science of all. Now the joke goes that while math is the universal language of science, physics really is math with units. Chemistry is stinky or messy physics and biology is applied chemistry. Now what this joke really means is that biology is a multidisciplinary science because living organisms are really subject to the basic laws of physics and chemistry. Math, if you look in the pyramid to the left, math is the foundation of all sciences. Then comes physics. Chemistry is built on the foundation of physics and biology is built on the foundation of chemistry. Therefore, math, physics, and chemistry are all the foundations of biology. If you look on the pyramid to the right, that pyramid represents the fact that biology is the most complex of all the sciences because it is really built on the foundation of the other two. So chemistry as it applies to biology, what we need to refresh, we need to refresh our basic knowledge of chemistry before we move on. And specifically, you need to refresh your knowledge of the nature of matter, basic atomic structure, so the structure of the atom, elements and compounds, properties of elements, chemical reactions, type of chemical bonds, acid and bases and buffers. And specifically, we're going to be talking in this video about type of bonds. Bonds are really a story of sharing. You know that atoms share electrons in order to complete their outer valence shells. Now, atoms in a molecule, however, attract the electrons to varying degrees, depending on how many protons and how big um, their nucleus is. Electronegativity is a property of each atom and it measures this particular atom's attraction for electrons in a covalent bond. The more electronegative an atom is, the more strongly it'll pull shared electrons towards itself. And you can see in that little cartoon uh, about two friends and the sharing of cookies, the analogy um, with bonds. A garden variety regular covalent bond is when two friends will split the cookie 50-50. So the electrons are shared equally. A polar covalent bond is when one of the friends takes seven eighths, seven eighths of the cookie or the majority of the cookie and just leaves you a small piece. So that friend is more electronegative than you. And finally, an ionic bond, which is the ultimate non-sharing is when your friend eats the whole cookie and leaves nothing for you. So a non-polar covalent bond the atoms will share the electrons equally. And you can see at the bottom, it's like a tug of war and um, both atoms are equidistant in, in the tug of war. In a polar covalent bond, the tug of war is won by one of the atoms. Why? Because that one atom is more electronegative and the atoms do not share the electrons equally. The unequal of sharing of electrons will cause partial positive and partial negative charge for each atom because remember electrons are charged, are negatively charged and the protons and the nucleus of the atom are positively charged. Ionic bonds are really the ultimate non-sharing. In this case, uh, here I'm showing you a picture of a model of sodium chloride or table salt. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound. How is sodium chloride formed? The sodium atom contains a single electron, shown here in red, in its outer valence shell. The outer valence shell can hold eight. So sodium is seven short. Chlorine atom contains seven electrons in its outer valence shell. So it's just missing one to have a completely filled outer shell. For this reason, chlorine will actually pull or steal an electron from sodium. It'll literally steal its electron. And now the chlorine ion 
it's no longer an atom, it's an ion, it's a charged particle, will have one extra electron. That means one electron more than the protons in the nucleus. Therefore, it will have a single negative charge. The sodium ion now is missing one electron. So it has less, one less electrons than protons in the nucleus, so it'll have a net charge of plus one. It'll be a positively charged ion. In both cases though, the ions are happy because their outer valence shells are completely filled. Because sodium is charged positively and chlorine ion is charged negatively, an ion, an anion, and a cation, they will strongly attract, be attracted to each other. And actually ionic bonds are quite strong because of this um, attraction. And what they do in nature is they form crystal lattices, crystal structures as shown at the bottom of the picture. So table salt really is a crystal of two um, oppositely charged ions that are arranged precisely in a precise manner. Now, true ionic bonds are very, very strong. They are much stronger than covalent bonds, but they do not exist in a cell. And I want you to think about it, why that is. And we're gonna get back to this question later in the videos. There's also weak bonds in biology. They're really more of a temporary attractions. They're not true bonds, they're attractions. The most important of those are the hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are an attraction between a partially charged positive hydrogen atom and another partially negative atom, partially charged negative atom. There's also ionic interactions and you'll often see them labeled in textbooks as ionic bonds, even though they're not true ionic bonds. These are attractions between ionized charged groups of atoms. And we're gonna explore more of these ionic interactions when we talk about the structure of proteins. There's also so-called van der Waals interactions. This is basically a generic attraction between protons of one atom and electrons of another atom. And it's dependent on the distance. There's hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions. And these are the major uh, weak and common attractions or um, sometimes they can even repel. So they're interactions, we don't call them attractions, but interactions that are very common in biology. Now they're weak and they're temporary. They can be formed and broken and reformed. However, they're very, very powerful as there are hundreds and hundreds of them in large molecules. So biology uses large molecules macromolecules. And because there's hundreds and hundreds of them, they're actually uh, together quite strong and responsible for maintaining the structure of large molecules. But we will explore this in later videos. Okay, let's talk a little bit about hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bond, the hydrogen bond is the most famous bond in biology. Okay, and you see here in the picture, three different hydrogen bonds shown in um, orange. How can we recognize hydrogen bonds? Well, a hydrogen has to be involved. Okay, so when you see on the left in the picture, you will see that in each case, you have a hydrogen, which has a partially positive charged. That delta symbol, the Greek delta, is used to show that the charge is partial. So this is not an ion, so the charge is partial. So the hydrogen ion is partnered with a more electronegative atom, like an oxygen or a nitrogen. Um, the electronegative atom will pull electrons closer to itself and will leave the hydrogen partially positively charged. And because the hydrogen has a partial positive charge, it'll be attracted to something that is partially negatively charged. In the first case, it's attracted to an oxygen, the second also. In the third case, it's attracted to a nitrogen in another molecule, in another covalent bond, okay? Hydrogen bonds are weak. They can break and reform. Large biological molecules have thousands of them to help them keep their shape. That's why they're very, very important in biology. Water is also 
um, forming hydrogen bonds. And the hydrogen bonds water molecules form with either itself or with other molecules are important for many, many of the properties of water. And you can see here in this model that water has polar covalent bonds. And because of that, it has a partially negative charge on the oxygen and partially positive charges on the hydrogen. For that reason, a hydrogen of one water molecule can form a hydrogen bonds with an oxygen of another water molecule. And this is how water molecules interact with each other, or they also have the capability of forming hydrogen bonds with other polar molecules. Hydrophobic interactions. What are hydrophobic interactions? Molecules which are hydrophobic exclude water. They fear water, they hate water. And hydrophobic interactions really are when hydrophobic molecules band together to exclude water. Think oil and vinegar in dressing. They will separate. So the hydrophobic molecules, which are oils and fats, will stick together in order to hide from water. Hydrophobic attractions are responsible for the formation of biological membranes. Molecules will bury, hide their hydrophobic regions away from water. This is how phospholipids build membranes. When you immerse phospholipids in an aqueous solution, that is a water-based solution, they will spontane spontaneously form a sphere in such a way that the hydrophobic tail of the phospholipids will face each other while the polar hydrophilic heads will face the water. So inside of this structure called the liposome will be water and outside of it is also water, but the hydrophobic tails are actually buried inside away from the water. An ionic bond, which is labeled below, between a DNA and a protein in this case, is really an electrostatic attraction in the aqueous, again, aqueous stands for water-based cytoplasm of the cell between ionized group of large molecules. We're gonna explore ionization of functional groups of large molecules, but I wanted to introduce you to the concept. You have a partial, You have, I'm sorry, you have a negative charge on one functional group, in this case is a phosphate group, and a positive charge in another functional group, in this case it's an amino group, and they both attract each other, and they attract each other quite strongly. However, this is not a true ionic bond. This is an interaction, an attraction between negatively charged parts of a molecule and positively charged parts of a molecule. The reason it's not an ionic bond is because they do not form crystals. They do not form perfectly ordered helices, sorry, lattices. So it is important to understand that there is ionic interactions are not really true ionic bonds. There is no ionic compound here, okay? So this is the end of type of bonds and come and explore with me properties of water in the next video.